Hi, this is Taya Graham of the Police Accountability Report, and I am here with a breaking news update. Yet another police officer was charged with lying and drug dealing. This time it was Officer Ivo Luvado who was charged with lying to the FBI in a criminal conspiracy to distribute roughly half a million dollars worth of cocaine, which begs the question, how involved are police officers in this illicit drug trade? Here with the details is Stephen Janis to tell me about this allegedly drug dealing cop. Stephen, give us some of the facts in this case. So th today, Maryland uh, State, Maryland U.S. prosecutors announced that this cop was charged through criminal information with one count of lying to a grand jury related to a drug raid that actually happened about 10 years ago where Baltimore City Police had made a big deal about confiscating 44 kilos of cocaine. The problem was it was actually 44 kilos instead of 41. Three of those kilos were then sold to an informant who later, you know, promised to deal these drugs for the police officers. He was involved in this conspiracy with several other officers. His total take from this, interestingly enough, was $10,000. We know, as you pointed out in your introduction, that the street value of three kilos is, is 400000 half a million dollars. So, yeah. But the point being that this is an ongoing fallout from the Gun Trace Task Force scandal, uh, which is a, you know, a scandal that started with just seven officers who, seven, just seven, seven officers who were accused of lying, um, dealing drugs, and stealing. And robbing money, residents. And robbing well. residents. But this also raises great questions about a continued list of two things officers who are dealing or involved in the drug trade and officers who are lying, because he was part of a courtier of officers who also lied about planting guns. So the sort of nexus here is that planting guns and, and criminalizing residents at the same time participating in the illicit drug trade. It's pretty uh, damning, you know, sort of nexus here that we have. So, Stephen, this is the 14th officer that mm -hmm. has been caught up in this gun trace task force scandal that has been related to drug dealing. So yeah. I have to ask the question, is it fair to say that some of our cops are actually really involved in the drug trade? Well, you know, the narrative that the mainstream media puts out that the Baltimore Police Department is, is an isolated, the bad apple series has completely been thrown out and the barrel is now rolling down the ground in disgrace because this is so literally like a pandemic within the police department when you got 14 officers uh, who have been charged with a variety of things uh, dealing drugs like you said before also planting evidence all sorts of stuff uh, and you, it, it, it seems to be ongoing this is not over so you're beyond the point of a bad apple you know you're point of a poison tree and I think it raises questions about who's running the drug business in Baltimore City. So what are we saying when we criminalize communities and we prosecute people and we you know take people and drag them out of their homes and you know do search warrants and all sorts of aggressive policing and we see those police officers in batting rams. Well what we're saying is they're protecting their own business. So this is a serious crisis in policing. It is a it is a crisis level at this point. So Stephen, I have to ask you, we have seen before officers charged with crimes who are still on the payroll of the police department. Now that this officer has been charged, do you think he's actually going to lose his job? Well, just this week, Officer Pinheiro, who's another Baltimore police officer who was charged and then convicted of planting evidence. Here, we'll show the body cam footage right now. You can see that this officer was caught on his own body cam, planting evidence, putting an innocent man in jail. It's still working for the police department two and a half years later. He is still on the force. So, no, there is no guarantee that he will be fired. It, usually what happens if an officer is charged with a crime, he's suspended with pay. How many of us can say that? Then after he's convicted, if it's a misdemeanor, then he gets a time period where they do an internal investigation to see if his alleged crimes broke any of the internal um, you know, procedures in the department. And then he can be recommended, he can have a trial board where a trial board can say, well, we're not gonna fire you anyway. So no, this is not the end of his career. He'll probably still be, he'll probably be on the payroll for another two or three, four years, depending on how long this trial drags out. So this is another problem when we have police officers continually violating the law, but there's no consequences for them. You and I would be fired in a second if we were Absolutely. part of a drug dealing conspiracy. We would never see the light of it. We wouldn't be able to get jobs. In fact, we just talked to people who can't get jobs for minor, minor crimes right. and on their record. But police officers continue to be paid. It, it, it belies the purpose, the whole idea of we're reforming police. And so don't worry, we're going to keep you updated on the case of Ivo Luvado, and we will also keep you updated on police misconduct here in Baltimore City and around the country. Please join us Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, where we have a live chat and a lively discussion. My name is Taya Graham. This is Stephen Janis for the Police Accountability Report. Please be safe out there.